What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com. So earlier this week, a new version of Joint Push Pull was released with a couple new features. So I thought we'd make a video checking them out. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so remember that you can download Joint Push Pull by visiting Sketchication right here. And unlike previously, um, this is now a paid extension. So you can either, there's a 30 day free trial, there's a perpetual license, or what I recommend, which is getting the Fredo 6 bundle, which contains eight of his plugins for $40. Um, but any of those you can get through this link. But this new version has a couple new features that I wanted to talk about. All right, so first off, this new version comes with a new feature that allows you to do incremental push pulling with joint push pull. So let's say for example, that I had this circular shape right here and I was to push pull it up by, we'll call it six inches right here. Well, if you hold the Alt key on your keyboard and then you click on your surfaces, Notice what this is going to do is this is going to incrementally push pull these objects. So what that allows you to do is that allows you to push pull the object by the length that it had push pulled before. So notice how it's push pulling to here and then it's also adding that increment right here. And so this is especially helpful for things like stairs, right? So let's say that we were to hold all. Whoops. So we're going to click on this. We'll offset it up six inches, but then if you hold all, and then click in here. Notice how that's going to continue bringing these stairs up just like this, where you would have had to push pull it up and then push pull it by six inches and then push pull it up and uh, push pull it by six inches, other things like that. So this is actually a huge time saver for things like this kind of stairs in SketchUp. So he's also added the ability to set a target plane. And so the way the target plane works is you can click and hold or long click on a face like this, well, notice how when I click and hold, what this does is this sets a target plane, right? You can see it because it's yellow in here. Well, then you can just click on faces and I need to make sure that I tap the control and I need to make sure that I'm in push pull mode right here. But then any face that you click on is going to be extruded to that target plane height. So you can use this in order to set a target plane and then um, take a whole bunch of faces and extrude them to match this plane just by single clicking. So it's not a massive time saver, but it is something where if you have a whole bunch of things you want to set to one height, it can be a lot faster to click and hold to set that target plane and then set these surfaces level with that plane. All right, and so there was a previous issue where if you had a texture applied to a surface like this one, and then you use joint push pull in thicken mode, like this. So if you were to extrude this face up, what it would do is it would mess up your texture mapping, right? So your texture would be mapped in here diagonally, but then when you did the uh, thicken mode, it would take this and it would like straighten it out. All right, so now in this newest version, if I activate joint push pull and I turn the finishing up like this and I thicken the face, notice how it retains the texture mapping from down below. So now we no longer have this issue where we have to go back in and resample textures and reapply them to surfaces when we're using thicken mode of joint push pull. So these additional features are additions to an already really helpful extension. I'll link to it in the notes down below, but leave a comment below. Let me know what you think about joint push pull in general. I just love having that conversation with you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.